Uh, good afternoon and welcome to our webinar. Uh, I'm sitting here in Sola Plaza's office in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, the weather has been uh, quite rough in the last couple of days, but today it's uh, surprisingly sunny and that fits perfectly to today's topic, uh, which is the sunny outlook for the Greek solar PV market. Uh, I'm Selina Gundlach, I'm the project manager. I'm uh, organizing this year's uh, Solar Plaza Summit Greece. Uh, it's already our fourth edition of this event. And um, yeah, briefly, uh, in regard to our agenda, I will start with the introduction for this webinar. Then uh, Stelios Psumas, a policy advisor at Helapco, is going to give a presentation about the milestones of the Greek PV market, and uh, he's going to give an overview of the newest renewable energy laws. Then Stelios is going to moderate a panel discussion between Christos Konopoulos, head of project development uh, at Juvi, and uh, Stefanos Lialilos at uh, uh, Zero Generation. He is the country manager for Greece. The main topics for the panel discussion are the success factors for developing and investing in the Greece solar PV market, uh, as well as the biggest obstacles for developing and investing, how to overcome them as well. And lastly, we will talk about the trends that are shaping the future of solar operations. Then we have a few minutes for Q&A, and that's already the end of the webinar. Then, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Solar Plaza yet, we facilitate knowledge sharing and networking opportunities with the overall mission to accelerate the transition towards renewable energies. Uh, we were established in 2004, and uh, since then we organized over 180 events around the world. Next to our events, we also offer a consultancy service in case your business needs support in terms of uh, market entry or project development, please reach out to my colleagues uh, on our website. And then Solar Plaza also has a foundation to support those communities in the world who often rely on funding. Uh, we give 5% of our profits to the foundation to accelerate the sustainable energy transition for all, everyone in the world. But now let's dive into Greece. Uh, so we have a full day event coming up on the 15th of November in Athens. We expect over 150 attendees and we already have over 20 speakers, uh, which is all made possible uh, by our over 15 uh, partners. Now, a little surprise for the attendees for this webinar. We have a 10% discount code, which you can use uh, to purchase your ticket for the conference on our website. Now, uh, before I introduce the speakers for today, a few practical notes. Uh, if you have any questions, please use uh, the chat box. We will then answer your questions at the end uh, of the webinar during the Q&A. Also for technical issues, please use the chat box. Uh, we will share the presentation slides uh, as well as the full recordings with you uh, within one to two days after the webinar. Now, uh, our first speaker is uh, Christos Konopoulos. Um, he has been working in the renewable sector since 2010. He has been involved in both PV and uh, wind project. And for the purpose of today's webinar, he presents the project development perspective from Juvi. The second speaker is uh, Stefanos Lialius. He has over 15 years of experience in the renewable sector. He has overseen the constructions of over 500 megawatt of projects, and he developed over 950 me megawatts of projects in four continents. Um, lastly, we have uh, Stelios Psumas. Uh, most of you probably already know him or have seen him somewhere. He has been supporting Solar Plaza over several years already. Uh, he's a leading Greek uh, PV consultant. Uh, he started to lobby for PV in Greece in, in 1995. 
And uh, without him, I'm confident to say we probably wouldn't have the renewable support schemes that we do have today in Greece. So yeah, without further ado, I would like to give the word to Stelius and please turn on your camera so the attendees can see you as well. Hello, Selena. Hello, everybody. Can I have control of the presentation now? Yes, you have full control. Thank you. Okay. I will start with, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, there's a time overlap between uh, slides. Um, I present this slide for many years now and every, every year it becomes bigger and bigger just because uh, the roadmap of PV development uh, has been a long one and uh, it's been a, a bumpy road uh, along the years. Uh, the PV history started actually in Greece uh, in 2006 when we introduced the first feed-in tariffs. Uh, then we had the first market boom a few years later. And then we, uh, along with other countries like Spain, for example, uh, we lived uh, the dark ages of our market uh, for almost five years with uh, practically no market. However, the market was revived uh, during the last uh, five, six years with uh, the introduction of uh, new support schemes, including tenders, uh, which became the norm after 2018. Uh, in 2020, the EU target model became effective in Greece. That means that merchant projects were also uh, able to start uh, being developed in, in the country. Uh, we passed the last three years with a lot of new legislation, really a lot of new legislation, I think sometimes even more than actually needed. Uh, however, this is meant to simplify authorization procedures and make things simpler for, for investors. Uh, during the last uh, three years, uh, we uh, just because of this uh, new uh, support scheme and uh, the authorization scheme, we've seen a, a second boom of the market, I would say even, even bigger than the first one, while less of this year, uh, we started having or discussing the first uh, corporate PPAs in the country. And uh, I guess that Stefanos uh, will uh, comment on that uh, later on during the discussion. Uh, let's keep that uh, currently we're experiencing uh, an incredible market boom, a lot of interest. I will give some uh, uh, figures later on. Uh, which are really spectacular for a small country like Greece. I don't seem to have control over the... Okay, okay. Now I do. It takes some time to change the slides. Sorry for that. Everything. Okay. Not again. <laughs> uh, here is uh, the situation uh, which I described later on when you translate it into megawatts uh, being installed and connected uh, to the grid. As you can see, uh, there is a flat line between uh, 2014 and 2018. It was exactly the time that the market was frozen. However, you can see the very rapid increase during the last three years. Uh, currently, Greece has uh, something uh, uh, around uh, 5 gigawatt of uh, PV installed. Uh, actually, this year we expect uh, the market to be over 1 gigawatt, and probably it will be the best ever uh, market uh, figures for, for ever in, in the Greek uh, PV uh, market. Uh, and this can also be seen in uh, in the situation in the, the real energy market. Here is an announcement by the system uh, operator of Greece, Avmie or IPTO. Uh, just a few days ago, on the 7th of October, the entire uh, electricity demand of the country was covered by renewables. That happened uh, for the first time, and actually it happened for five consecutive hours. And if you see these hours, it was from 11 to 3, which means exactly the hours that uh, PV is uh, feeding into the grid, which means that this historic uh, uh, landmark 
uh, was mostly due to PV, of course, wind as well, but uh, we can be very proud and uh, it shows that uh, things are possible. I remember in the 90s where people were telling us that it's impossible for grids to extend more than 10, 20% renewables and now we have 100%, which is great. Uh, so what is the country going to do about that? Here you see the existing uh, long-term energy planning and targets of, the, uh, of Greece. As you can see, the blue line is uh, PV. Uh, there was a plan, and I say was because this plan is uh, currently under revision. Uh, figures will change, and uh, obviously the uh, uh, figures for PV will increase considerably. Uh, according to the current law, uh, we expect something uh, in the order of 8 gigawatt by 2030. However, as I told you before, we are already in the 5 gigawatt. That means uh, the target for 2030 will increase considerably. Uh, well, the current market trends uh, show at least 12 uh, gigawatt uh, until that year. And of course, uh, depending on the situation and uh, most importantly, depending on the development of new grid capacity, this figure can be even higher. And the reason that uh, the Greek government is revising its energy plan is because of the Green Deal of the EU and the current and the recent uh, Repower EU uh, targets. Uh, and we expect that uh, renewables will cover something in the order of 80 to 85 percent of electricity uh, demand. Uh, in less than eight years from now. That explains the figures I, I gave you before. Now, obviously there is interest and uh, there are prospects for, for the market. However, as I said before, we're experiencing a, a huge boom in the market, uh, which is translated in uh, thousands of applications for new uh, PV systems. Currently, uh, the regulatory authority for energy, which is the first step one has to take uh, while authorizing a PV project in Greece, they have uh, uh, acquired almost 89 gigawatt of applications, of which PV uh, is uh, last, uh, a huge uh, portion of it. Uh, we have uh, or over 56 gigawatt of applications for this uh, paper, and this figure does not include the uh, the small systems below one megawatt. Uh, we have a few more gigawatts of small systems uh, waiting uh, to, to to proceed. Uh, the operating rest, well, it was nine gigawatt, but uh, already this month it's over 10 gigawatt now. Uh, we also have. Uh, a, a similar figure with uh, of new projects with connection terms already and uh, we also have a lot of applications to the um, uh, grid and system operators for over 24 gigawatts they are in theory eligible to get connection terms that gives us a, a total of almost 44 gigawatts while the capacity of the transmission system is expected to be uh, less than 30 by 2030. And I say expected because according to the 10-year plan of the uh, transmission system operator, this is the picture we have. So we have 56 gigawatt of applications, 44 gigawatts of mature projects, and less than 30 gigawatt of actual grid capacity. As you realize, uh, there is a bottleneck here, and uh, no matter how the grids will be developed in the next few years, uh, some people will have just to abandon uh, this, uh, this uh, race. Uh, parallel to that, we also have uh, a lot of applications for uh, storage systems, uh, especially batteries. Uh, in total, there is uh, over 23 gigawatt of applications so far. Uh, most of them are, as I said, batteries, uh, standalone batteries. There are also a lot of uh, projects with uh, combining renewable with uh, batteries. Uh, and it's obvious again that uh, uh, we have more applications than we can actually consume. Uh, even the best, uh, well, currently the target for batteries is around uh, 3 gigawatt by 2030. Although uh, I believe that uh, it is feasible and realistic to talk of something 
between five and eight gigawatt of uh, um, storage systems in the next decade. Still, we have many, many more applications. Um, so this has created a bottleneck, and this is probably the biggest uh, problem we face nowadays. Uh, that is why the Greek Energy Ministry uh, well published uh, um, a ministerial decision this August, uh, describing priorities for grid connection to the system. And uh, here you can see which projects uh, are given priority. In total, these, uh, let's say, priority subgroups, uh, they make a total of 13 gigawatts, which leaves uh, a small space for non-priority projects. And this uh, ministerial decision has uh, created a lot of uh, turmoil in the, in the energy market, especially the PV market, because it is obvious that uh, you, you now have uh, uh, investors who have uh, good chances to, to proceed with their projects and investors that have to wait for a few years before they actually get a grid connection offer. Obviously, this is not a problem for, for Greece only. Uh, other countries are facing such problems. Uh, however, uh, one has to solve their own problems. Uh, with regard to the authorization of storage systems, uh, for the first time this July, we had uh, a new law which describes uh, how uh, storage systems will be authorized, and it covers practically every use and every need for storage systems behind the meter, in front of the meter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it also explains how the battery systems and uh, will participate in, in the markets. Now, talking about the markets, currently, as I said, we started with feed-in tariffs, very generous feed-in tariffs uh, in 2006. However, today, for a, a newcomer in the Greek market, there are actually three ways to go. The first is to uh, participate in uh, tenders. Actually, the Greek government has the green light from the European Commission to proceed with uh, uh, auctions for almost four gigawatt of renewables uh, until 2025. Or uh, an investor uh, can participate in the energy exchange market, the wholesale markets, or even sign corporate PPAs. Uh, corporate PPAs is the new kid in town. We have very a little experience in Greece. However, it seems that it's a very, very promising uh, segment of the market, but we'll discuss it about uh, later on uh, with uh, our uh, friends and uh, partners to this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stelios, for this uh, very insightful presentation. Uh, as you already mentioned, uh, we will hear more about uh, corporate PPAs and auctions during the conference. Uh, itself. Uh, for now, before we start the discussion, I would uh, like to ask all speakers, um, Stefanos and Christos, to turn the cameras on, and uh, then we will proceed with the first um, audience question. So the first question is, uh, is it worth it to develop a PV project in Greece? Right, a, a bold question. Um, also, after hearing um, Stelio's presentation about the recent developments in Greece. Do we already have some answers? Let's give it one more second. All right, 87, okay. Um, very clear, 87% voted for yes. Um, yeah, um, Stelios, uh, I would like you to, to kick off the yeah. discussion with the speakers. Actually, I have two questions for both of you, uh, Christos and Stefanos. Uh, the first is about uh, the success factors. What makes a PV project uh, successful in Greece? And the second is exactly the opposite. What are the main barriers uh, to success? And how can uh, a project possibly fail uh, while being developed in Greece? Please. Yeah, uh, I would please say uh, for now, we will focus on, on the success factors. Then yeah. we will have yeah. another uh, question for the audience, and then we will move to the obstacles. 
happy to go first. Um, so um, for us in sales generation, uh, success is uh, mainly perseverance and then quality of development. Uh, we don't believe that uh, uh, project development exercise is something to be concluded in six to eight months. Um, unfortunately, the, the slides I just uh, showed earlier uh, refer to just the opposite. A lot of people think that uh, developing a project is a quick and easy exercise, but uh, the fact that not many projects have reached financial close uh, in the past years shows that exactly that that it's it's not just a matter of, of just uh, running around and getting a bunch of permits. Uh, true development needs to be a bit more consistent and uh, uh, much much more focused than than we are used to do in Greece. Uh, also with regards to uh, post-development items that are often overlooked in the development period. Uh, so to answer the question, it, it's, it's mainly doing, doing a good and professional job uh, during the life, during the development and not to rush it because sometimes we rush in order to be the first ones on the, on the sweet spot, let's say, but usually that, that doesn't work very well for, for anybody. Christos, what's your view? Hello, everyone, to, to both of you and uh, to all our attendees. Uh, I agree with uh, I agree with you, Stefanos. Uh, I believe that uh, it is uh, very important uh, that uh, anyone who wants to to invest uh, and develop a project here in uh, in Greece, uh, first of all, he uh, it is very important that. Uh, he does a very good uh, screening of the situation of the area that uh, they want to develop the project uh, as there are many uh, areas that could uh, go uh, wrong. Uh, the second would be that uh, uh, to go uh, to, to plan thoroughly the whole strategy of uh, the development uh, process from uh, identifying uh, after they identify the, the area uh, until they, they reach uh, uh, the ready to build uh, status. Uh, if you don't have uh, a thorough planning of uh, of it, then uh, many things could uh, go wrong. Uh, things can go wrong uh, even even so, but uh, it is a, a very good way to uh, to lower the risks uh, there. Uh, of course, uh, as Stelios mentioned earlier, uh, things are changing uh, a lot over the years. So. Uh, the, the development is a long process and uh, you need to, to act uh, fast uh, in order not uh, to, to fall into these uh, kind of changes and uh, to be able to, to adapt to these kind of changes. So uh, during the development, uh, you might have to, to change your business plan more than once. Uh, so it is really important to, to be able to do so and uh, have uh, backups and uh, mitigate your uh, risks uh, of your business plan. So uh, if you do all these things and uh, a careful planning of uh, your development process of a project, uh, then uh, I think, uh, I believe that it is uh, guaranteed that uh, uh, success will come sooner or later, as uh, Stefanos mentioned. Just to add a small thing, because uh, Stefanos mentioned a bottleneck uh, it is true when you see the numbers of studios uh, presented, which are true, uh, you get scared. You say, why should I do it? I mean, that was the question that people asked me, why should we develop in Greece? Because they're already doing 100 gigawatts. Uh, reality is, though, from those 100 gigawatts, I wouldn't bet my money on either 5% of these to reach a uh, financial close of this project. So. It might look that this, the situation is on a bottleneck, but uh, experience has shown that 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 is not true. Uh, these a lot of these projects that are being licensed or have been licensed won't see the light of day, and not because uh, 
there's nobody to take these projects, but just because uh, these projects have not been properly developed. And that's a fact. Uh, thank you, Christos and Stefanos. Yeah, talking about uh, bottlenecks uh, also brings us to our next um, audience question. Um, yeah, the question is, which is the greatest obstacle in the Greek <coughs> solar PV market? We have uh, land issues, grid issues, public objections, licensing delays and uh, financing. For grid and land issues, um, yeah, this can be availability, but it can also be the type of land needed or the quality needed, any issue related to this. Give it five more seconds. All right, we have the results. 59% uh, uh, says the grid issues are the greatest obstacle. Uh, second is the licensing delays. Very interesting. We have at the conference also a session about the, how to solve the grid congestion issue. Um, so this is very relevant. Good to hear that the audience identified this as well. Um, and then we have financing public objections and land, land issues. All right, moving to the discussion, yeah. give the word to Stephen. Uh, I think, Selina, that we have a wise audience. Uh, more or less, um, I would vote uh, the same. However, to be honest, I was a bit surprised uh, about financing, probably because uh, we are used to old times financing, where we had smaller projects and it was easier to get uh, financing. Now we're talking about uh, huge power stations which uh, require hundreds of millions. And although the grid banks are willing to offer financing, uh, money is not infinite. So I guess uh, that we are a bit optimistic because we're still uh, a long way to get to financing for certain projects. And probably uh, sometime later, hopefully this will be the next bottleneck. However, uh, let's start uh, the, the other way now. Uh, Christos, what do you see as the main obstacles for uh, PV uh, development in, in Greece? Uh, to be honest, I was uh, I, I was expecting that uh, the vote would show that uh, grid uh, issues uh, would be the, the main consideration for for everyone who wants to develop a project here in Greece. Uh, after also your uh, uh, presentation, it's. Uh, it was expected. Uh, still, I believe that uh, there are also many, many problems uh, in land, uh, which I believe a couple of years ago it was in the solar plaza main issue, and uh, I, it seems that um, our attendees believe that uh, it is no longer such a big problem, which is uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to see it that way. Uh, land problem, I believe it's, it is always a main problem for uh, for development. Uh, because uh, it is difficult uh, here in Greece since we do not have uh, uh, ratified forest maps, uh, the cadastral is not uh, over, uh, there are objections in uh, in different, um, whether, whether an area belongs to, to, the, uh, to the public sector or the municipality or uh, any other authority and uh, it, uh, it is quite difficult to, to identify and uh, finalize the area that you want uh, to build the PV and it, it's uh, the first step in the development of a project that uh, you have to uh, to, to, to have uh, the land. So uh, I think it was, um, I was surprised to see that it was uh, such a, a low uh, percentage. Uh, apart from that, that uh, yes, uh, the grid uh, is, it seems to be the problem now as uh, uh, not all the projects will uh, receive uh, uh, final uh, connection terms. So uh, one has to rush and uh, has to be able to uh, to have uh, a correct project, uh, a good project, and uh, already to have applied. Otherwise, it is necessary to make long-term planning in the development of a PV. So. 
This is uh, my opinion. Stefanos? Uh, before, I mean, I was I a was long time away from Greece. And uh, when I was here in the first wave, uh, the, main, the main question was uh, licensing. It was very, very difficult to get to get all the permits. It was uh, it was a mess. There was no uh, plan for the license. Everybody was asking whatever. Um, I always thought that licensing was a difficult thing in, in project development in Greece. But until I went outside of Greece and I saw that, to be honest, whatever you have uh, contact with the public authorities, it's pretty much the same everywhere. So you always have issues in the UK. We had issues with the council, um, in, a, in other countries where the, where the process was more government, central government orientated, you couldn't get through the ministers. So the licensing part in Greece is not easy. I wouldn't say it's easy. And uh, sometimes it, it involves long waiting periods, but it's not a, I don't think it's the main uh, bottleneck and obstacle here in Greece. Uh, land is always an issue because we are not a, a flat land country, so PV has to be done in weird places, rocky mountains, slopes, uh, and uh, uh, but in the end, I have to agree uh, that, uh, that the main obstacle is the grid, and not because um, there are no grid connection points but there is no coherent policy on that uh, nobody has sat down very very seriously to see what should be the plan for the grid and who should get access uh, just just with our first surf uh, first coming first serve policy it doesn't really work uh, this decision in uh, in august was supposed to be a good step forward and put and try to alleviate uh, the bottleneck a bit but it ended up quite a weird and, and, and rush job uh, that has to be overcome so for me it's not that much of a grid but uh, of a grid issue but of a policy issue to be honest because countries should have uh, a long-term plan on the grid, on the development of the grid. Uh, I'm always saying to people, I'm always amazed by um, government-owned DNOs or TSOs or however you want to call them, uh, that don't look at the uh, expansion on, on the grid with other people's money. I'm pretty sure that all developers and investors <clears throat> would be happy to have a chunk uh, of cost on their projects if that meant that the connection uh, route would be would become easier so i i never understood why a country doesn't want to build their grid with other people's money because grids are expensive and there's not a lot of incentive to invest in them from uh, governments uh, so i guess it's all about planning I mean, the same principle applies to project development. It applies also to policy makers. Thank you, Stefan. Selina, can we proceed with the third question to our audience? Yes, exactly. Um, it will show in a second. Here we go. Um, so the last audience question already. Um, what do you see as the biggest trends in the Greek? solar market. Um, as options, we have storage, uh, green hydrogen, hydrogen projects, the new legislations, or new auctions and corporate PPAs. Yeah, you can um, also choose which ones you are most excited about, maybe, or which one you think will grow most significantly in the future, sorry. All right, um, new auctions and corporate PPAs, 54%. All right, uh, secondly, storage, um, okay. 
that's interesting and the next one is green hydrogen projects and the last one's new legislation also not too much surprising i would have maybe even expected storage to be the first one um yeah i will give the word to stelios again yeah uh, obviously uh, storage is a trend already and we've seen the large number of applications and the huge uh, capacity of storage systems being proposed. Um, I would agree with Stefanos that uh, we shouldn't stay at the uh, applications alone because uh, you, you will find among these applications some of the biggest uh, storage systems in the world, uh, costing a lot of money. And I don't believe that all these uh, applicants have this uh, money or the financial capacity to proceed with storage systems. There is a lot of discussion on PPAs as well, but uh, I would give the floor to Stefanos on that for just uh, a short uh, uh, comment on that, because as Selina said, this will be there will be an extensive discussion about PPAs in the conference organized by Solar Plaza on the 15th of November. So, uh, what do you see as the main trends uh, nowadays, Stefanos? Well. PPAs are definitely the trend in the big market. Uh, storage, although there's a big uh, amount of uh, applications, uh, at least for now, the, it's not clear what the needs of the system are. Uh, there's a talk of a tender in Q1 of 2023 for uh, storage systems. But until now, what we know from uh, IPTO is that uh, the, the need is at 50 megawatts. I, I guess they haven't looked at it very well, so I think this will be revised. But I don't think that this is a 20, giga, 20 gigawatt mar market, as the numbers show. <laughs> we are, although there was a law in summer, I think we are still waiting for more clarifications on that as, as, as to what exactly uh, the storage systems will be doing and will assisting with. Uh, so that remains to be seen. But uh, PPAs, yes, it's a it's a new it's a new uh, way of monetizing the projects, uh, and it's it's new for Greece because in other countries it's been it's been there for for a while. Uh, we are happy that we did in the summer uh, in in July we did uh, the first major corporate PPA, uh, so our 100 megawatt project uh, signed a bilateral PPA with uh, Energy Trader for a period of 10 years, and this enabled the project to go all the way through financial close. Uh, I would say to people that they shouldn't confuse a PPA, uh, a private corporate bilateral PPA, whatever, with a feeding tariff, because I, I know that in the minds of a lot of people, uh, we just exchanged uh, uh, who who signs the page. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's fundamentally different. And also, our PPA was a pay as produced, but these PPAs, I think, they are more on the they are on the decline because a lot of people anticipate higher balancing costs so they are moving on the market is moving on on, on solar shape ppas and even there we might see a bit more innovations and a bit more complexity coming in so i would say to people that this is something they need to really look into it and not take it as lightly as as it sounds christos uh, what about you? Uh, and if you could please comment also on how do you see different market segments in the Greek PV market uh, developing in the next years? Yes, uh, from uh, the uh, from the development and uh, the developers' uh, point of view and uh, construction point of view, uh, we would be more uh, interested in the storage. To be honest, rather than the the PPAs, as this is uh, an investor's uh, uh, issue to deal with uh, in a in a new project, so uh, we believe that, and we were anticipating uh, for the new law that uh, was uh, issued in uh, July, and uh, cleared the, how a storage uh, system can be developed. 
So um, we are still expecting to see how this is uh, going to, to go on and um, how this is going to be applied and uh, how many storage systems are going to be uh, built and uh, developed uh, over the next uh, years. So um, it, it was really good that uh, both uh, legislations uh, passed and uh, now the investors uh, have uh, all the potentials that uh, they require in order to, to develop their projects. Uh, I mean both uh, storage and PPA and uh, they can uh, uh, create uh, a business plan, uh, a thorough business plan in, uh, in all aspects uh, of, uh, of the strategy. Uh, what was uh, your question, uh, Stelios, again? Um, as a developer, how do you see the different segments, market segments for PV developing in Greece? Uh, so far we had the vast majority of systems was uh, small uh, commercial systems uh, below one megawatt the, this year the first time with uh, your project actually the project that you've developed we start entering the the era of utility scale projects however uh, there is a lot of discussion and pressure from society because uh, pv needs also to be a democratic uh, technology so how how you see things developing in the next two or three years let's say uh, we believe that uh, there is uh, room for both. Uh, it's something that goes uh, in parallel, uh, both uh, large-scale uh, uh, PVs and uh, smaller ones, and uh, they should not be conflicted. Uh, and actually, uh, one uh, can help the other. Smaller projects can be developed uh, more quickly. They have a, a more simple uh, licensing uh, process, uh, and uh, they are much... Uh, faster in uh, in the construction uh, large scales are the ones that they're going to really boost um, our market and uh, help uh, to uh, to develop the the overall grid in uh, in greece uh, but uh, opposite to the smaller ones uh, these are the ones that uh, they have uh, more difficult more complicated uh, development and uh, of course, uh, when they reach the construction phase, it's, uh, it takes uh, much longer to do it. And it also requires uh, uh, infrastructure like uh, high voltage stations or uh, grid uh, expansion works, uh, which uh, complicates things even more. So uh, I think it, it should not be, uh, let's say, a battle between the, the two, but uh, rather than both uh, develop uh, uh, simultaneously. Thank you. Uh, I think, Selina, now it's the time to involve our audience in the discussion. Yes, exactly. We got a couple of questions already from the audience. Um, the first one, I think, um, Stelius, might be for you. Um, how are storage projects currently remunerated uh, through auctions, through feed-in premiums or other? Uh, currently, the main uh, uh, scheme is uh, the auction scheme for systems uh, above 500 kilowatts, and uh, they are uh, they are paid uh, according to pay as bid, and they sign uh, a feeding premium contract actually when they participate in uh, auctions. For smaller systems, currently we have a feeding tariff for systems uh, below 500 kilowatts. Uh, which is going to last for, uh, I guess, uh, in theory, it stops uh, the end of 23. But uh, so it was supposed to stop earlier. But since there was a lot of interest, the government gives extensions all the time. However, the main vehicle nowadays is, is auctions and getting a fitting premium. Uh, since uh, during the last few months, uh, everything was resolved with uh, regarding uh, regulations for the participations of PP projects in uh, the wholesale market as well. Uh, we do have a problem there because uh, this uh, market opening coincided with the energy crisis and the Greek government has imposed a cap on the market price for, for PV and other renewables of 85 uh, euros per megawatt hour. This is not helpful for merchant projects and not helpful even for PPAs uh, when it comes to smaller PPA uh, contracts. However, this is temporary uh, and I guess that wholesale uh, projects will proceed in the coming years 
along with PPAs. But the main vehicle nowadays, and at least until 25, it's auctions with a fitting premium scheme. Okay, thank you. Very clear explanation. Um, uh, one related question to this is, um, is the grid in the Pano, uh, Peloponnese, so uh, oh, a region, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly, the region in Greece, uh, having capacity to accept solar energy uh, plus one megawatt as a PPA contract in 2023? Um, anyone um, has a question? Not in 23, I'm afraid. Uh, for those uh, who, who know the situation in Greece and especially in the area of Peloponnese, uh, the grid was very weak. Uh, there was a freezing of new applications uh, since uh, 2011 already. Uh, there was an extension of the high voltage grid in the area which is not finalized yet and which will allow the introduction of new systems. Actually, just uh, by coincidence, this week we have the first auction for Peloponnese for 86 megawatt of small projects up to 400 kilowatts. But if we're talking about uh, bigger projects, one has to wait until the grids in Peloponnese are uh, uh, strengthened. And so after uh, a few years, it will be possible to, to proceed with uh, larger projects in Peloponnese, not now. And I'm afraid not in 23 as well. Okay, uh, I believe we can take uh, maybe two more audience questions. Um, as a next one, I have, uh, what is the average size of projects in the pipeline at the moment? Hmm. You want, I mean, we have two developers and they, they have their own projects, so they can answer that. Uh, maybe Stephanos? I can uh, answer this one. Oh, okay. No, 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 Christo, please. Okay. Um, in in UV we have uh, we currently have a 600 megawatt uh, pipeline, but um, if we're talking uh, an average, there are many. Uh, I would say a hundred megawatt project is uh, something that uh, we see uh, a lot in the applications uh, in the regulatory authority of energy, and uh, it is something that it is um, common uh, at the moment in Greece rather than. Uh, a few years ago that uh, the Kozani project of 200 megawatts was uh, an exception and uh, something uh, unique. So uh, I think large scale is something that uh, it's going to be seen uh, a lot at the moment. Well, we're a bit more ambitious than, than, than uh, our current pipeline is, I'm not sure, because it grows daily. Uh, we are about three point something gigawatts. I don't know the something, to be honest. Uh, and uh, we are all focusing solely on more than 100 megawatt projects because on the monetization basis, don't forget we are, we are primarily an investor and not a developer. Um, our uh, monetization scheme works much better for over 100 megawatt projects. And uh, it is the way to go also from a balancing point of view because uh, people will discover that going forward, the bigger the project, the easier it is to balance the systems of that, uh, the energy output, I mean. So smaller projects will have a hard time entering the market and, and they will have higher balancing fees. So for us, it's a, it's a matter of numbers, it's not a matter of words. And, uh, and we think that the way to go is with having larger projects. Okay, thank you for your answer. Sounds indeed like there's a lot on the way. Um, I have one more question which I find very interesting. What about solar projects in uh, Crete? In, uh, when are they expected to start? So maybe uh, Crete or other uh, islands um, UV or zero generation, do you have solar projects uh, planned for, for those regions? This is an easy qu uh, question, uh, Selina, an easy answer. Uh, actually, Crete opens uh, uh, in a couple of days. I mean, 
uh, Kriti was uh, used to be a, a non-interconnected island for many, many years. And uh, that is uh, after the uh, um, establishment of uh, a few megawatts of PV, the, the grid was congested. However, since uh, the last few months, uh, grid is interconnected to the mainland grid. And the, for the first time uh, in uh, the next few days, we'll have uh, uh, the first auction for uh, 140 uh, megawatts in Crete. -E. Small projects, again, up to 400 uh, kilowatts. However, uh, this is not the end for Crete. -E. Since it will be interconnected to the mainland grid, uh, there will be opportunities for uh, even bigger projects in the near future, including storage systems. Uh, uh, I know there are a lot of discussions and a lot of interest about that. And uh, also there are old applications, especially for wind projects. However, uh, people are uh, looking at Crete more and more. Uh, there will be a lot of competition on the island, to be honest, though. So one should be a bit cautious about that. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the plans for Crete interconnection, I think, are planning for a second interconnection of Crete. And, um, and again, we are looking at other major plans of interconnecting Crete with Cyprus and, and even the Middle East. So we will become a hub. Uh, there might be potential, but as with everything, nothing is always as it seems. Okay, so people have to be a bit cautious. So, Uh, from our side, uh, we currently don't have anything. We are uh, as well anticipating for this uh, interconnection of uh, Crete and uh, all the islands. Uh, and uh, as a developer, of course, uh, we have our eye on all around Greece, to be honest. So Crete is included, Not, nothing uh, at the moment, but we cannot exclude anything. So Yeah, maybe for the future. Yes. Okay, um, yeah, then we're already um, at the end of our webinar. We still made it uh, within, within one hour despite the technical glitch. Uh, sorry again uh, for this problem. Uh, I want to give a big thank you for our speakers today for sharing your knowledge. Uh, Stefanos, thanks for sharing, uh, sharing all your knowledge today. Uh, I hope we will also be in contact for future events um, uh, very soon. Uh, Christos, also, thanks for you for uh, sh making time today. I know your your colleague, uh, Takis Saris, he will be speaking at our conference. So I'm excited to, to meet him uh, in Athens. And Stelios, every of year. course. Sorry? Takis uh, speaks every year in the conference. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Stelios, of course, uh, we will see each other in Athens. I'm looking forward to learning uh, a lot more from you about uh, the developments and different um, supporting schemes. And uh, lastly, also thanks for all the attendees for joining today. As mentioned before, we will share the slides and recording with you uh, afterwards. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.